Sharks are some of the most well-respected animals in all of cinema history. Beautiful, majestic, with great, just, just really great CGI. With such well-respected silver screen stars like Patrick Fensworth, who took home the Oscar in 2015 for his dramatic performance in the film Three-Headed Shark Attack, where he simultaneously played all three heads. And who could forget Jothany Jones, a true method actor if there ever was one. As I'm sure most of you heard in the papers, he went through extensive plastic surgery to get his tail fin replaced with an octopus's tentacles. Quite the dangerous procedure, but it all paid off when Sharktopus hit box offices that year. Unfortunately, however, Jothany was found dead in his hotel room on opening night. Doctors said it was due to complications of the surgery. Something about the two species not being compatible. Always sounded like a cover-up to me, though, so that Dorcel Gilman, son of the writer of the box office smash, could take over in the sequels. Really makes you wonder. But we're not here to discuss conspiracy theories. We're here to watch one of cinema's crowning achievements. One of the most well-received movies across the board. A film with the ingenious tagline, Whoever wins, we lose. <laughs> no, not that one. I'm talking, of course, about Mega Motherfucking Shark versus Crocosaurus. I'm sure you've all heard the rumors. Greatest film of all time, writes Legit Magazine. A marvel of cinematography, says Truth Quarterly. This film fumbles every cinematic rule from the script to the acting and especially the shark says the King Razzle internet blog. Huh. I tell you, the internet these days. I swear these children out here don't even know what quality is anymore. But enough blathering from me. I'm sure you're all very excited to get into the magic that is Mega Shark vs. Crocosaurus. I mean, I know that I sure as hell am. excited! So this movie starts off as any good movie should, with a giant ass crocodile popping out of a blood diamond mine and eating a gun-toting boss before stomping on a worker. You know, the basics. Oh, what's that? Is this movie in 3D, you ask? Well, no. That crocodile is just that realistic that it looks like it could jump out of the screen at any moment. <gasps> now this next part is quite central to the movie's main plot, so make sure you guys pay attention. Do you see this man right here? This character will be playing a pivotal role in this movie. Now, we're not going to see him for the rest of the entire film, so thank god we got to watch him escape. But the pivotal role this man will be playing is the role of Family Man. Kill you. I am providing for my family. Leave. Now I know you guys probably didn't come to this movie thinking you were going to learn a life lesson. I mean, especially this early on. Suddenly telling you that you shouldn't have to have a Crocosaurus near-death experience before you realize what's important in life. And I think maybe what's even more important to take away from this is... Crocosaurus couldn't finish the goddamn job! Ha ha ha! What'd he get? Two confirmed kills? What are you playing, Giant Monster D-League? Pathetic. So after that abysmal showing by Crocosaurus, we go live to the USS Gibson, where we meet... Oh my god. Is that... Urkel? I think I know what time that is. Do you now? Mm-hmm. Hmm, this time? Did I do that? Wow. Acting has been good to you, Steve. Or should I call you Jaleel? Either way, you got a lucky fucking break nab in this gig. Get to act in a movie with the famous Mega Shark? Not even gonna lie, I'm kinda jealous. Plus, hey, that fiance of yours isn't looking too bad either. 
I love you. Even though you like to play with big fish. But, yeah. Uh, Terry? Was it? What are you doing on the ship there, Terry Bear? Isn't that great? It repels the shark. Sound. This could change everything. Whoa. Okay, Terry. I'm gonna leave now before that great white shark breaks loose. Oh. You're torturing sharks. What? What kind of sadistic asshole has a heart cold enough to torture the noble shark? Oh, maybe I have lost my mind. No, you're fine, Steve. I should have seen the signs. I should have known since Family Matters you were going to pull some shit like this when you got older. You know what, Terry? I hope your fiancé dies. Yeah, yeah. I hope it ruins your entire life, you degenerate suspender enthusiast. So, after Terry decides to take a break from his cruel and unusual punishment of the kind-hearted shark, Whoa. he heads to the control room to meet up with the captain. Lieutenant McCormick, I'm sure that the research that you're doing on sharks is going to prove invaluable to our divers. But for right now, I need you to tell me what you see right there. Okay, Terry, I got this one. Let me take first crack at it. Uh, on the left there, we have what appears to be a green swirl of some sort. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm thinking McDonald's Shamrock Shake for that one. And then on the right there, we have what appears to be the Rainbow Phoenix. Heat displacements. Fuck. That was close, though. Those are whales, right? No, sir. Whales, flukes, they go up and down. Sharks, they go side to side. See, if you look at the heat projections, you'll see the size, the girth. I mean, they're all moving as one unit. This is massive. Psh, yeah, whales. <laughs> Idiot. No. What do you think? The whale wolf's gonna be making a cameo? You wish. Dorsal kicked his candy ass to the curb in the Sharktopus sequels. No, buddy, sorry. What we have here is the Megalodon! Weighing in at 130 pounds, with teeth sharper than the sharpest pencil lead, and skin stronger than... Strongest, the strongest Korean man. It's the Mega Shark! And in this corner, housing this lovely couple, as well as hundreds of other expendable characters, we have the USS Gibson! Gee, <laughs> I wonder who will win this. Come on, come on, wake up, wake up, wake up! Well, Terry, I know I said some pretty cruel things about you, but... I would be lying if I said you didn't deserve this, you heartless fuck! <laughs> so naturally, my boy Megalodon demolishes the ship with the only survivor being Terry, who just so happens to find a scuba diving set. All I can say is I hope the great white shark you were torturing doesn't get loose. Oh god, I really hope he doesn't get loose. Oh, what next you ask? Well, obviously, we're headed to the Congo to meet up with world-renowned hunter and all-around wild man bad boy, Nigel Putnam. Deco, give me some whiskey, will you? One day, after capturing a pig of, let's say, modest size, that pig of yours almost killed me. Huh? Nigel gets a visit from a sexy little thing who's given off a, under these glasses, I'd fuck you sideways vibe. And with an intro like that, you know we're looking at a love interest here. To me, they're kind of giving off a Indiana Jones 2 vibe. The kind of prissy girl falls for the rugged charms of the wild man bad boy. You know, textbook, really. N -n nigel Putnam? So Little Miss Thing here asks Nigel if he's up for a hunt. And after a bit of bribery, the two head off in search of what destroyed the mine from earlier. 
What is it, a ghost? A ghost that has already killed 34 of our men. Okay, calm down there, lady. I know Mr. Ross was on the chubby side, but I don't think he quite equates to 30 confirmed kills. No need to be marking up Croc's kill counter out of pity. I mean, it's pretty clear who the superior predator is. So once they get to the site, surprise, surprise, they find out that it was a giant crocodile. Oh, come on! How is Nigel's jaded heart supposed to find love if his interest dies within the first two minutes of being introduced? Do you know how difficult it is to find a blonde woman in the Congo? Because I don't. And on top of that, she had to die to the damn crocodile. That's fine, though. I swear, these movies are trying to hand the crocodile the title in this match. What? Nigel killed it. We're 20 minutes in and Nigel has already taken down the 50 foot crocosaurus. Well, there's an early movie twist for you. This is gonna cost Nigel 50%. 50? 50? 50? I want at least 10. Keep dreaming. What the fuck? Did he burn it to a crisp before shipping it off? Maybe I came to this movie looking at it the wrong way. Seems like Nigel's gonna be the real challenge for the Megalodon here. And now that the Crocosaurus is dead, we regroup with Terry, who's being interrogated about the sinking of the USS Gibson. And thank God, thank God, he didn't get eaten by that great white he was torturing. I mean, I certainly wasn't rooting for that. Come on, eat him, eat him. You were the only survivor on a ship that carried over 2,200 sailors. Oh, did you hear that? The only survivor on a ship that carried 2,200 sailors. Um, check please, Crocosaurus. Sorry there, buddy, but you're not coming back from that one. I've taken the time to devise a kill counter here. As you can clearly see, the pathetic crocodile is sitting at a laughable 35 kills. Whereas my mega shark brother is crushing it with a confirmed 2,200. See? I told you this was a great movie. So after we learn about how inadequate crocodiles are in the realm of badassery, we meet Special Agent Hutchinson, who's got an interesting proposition for Terror Bear here. Come work for us and kill a giant man-eating shark who is way too badass for you and you will 100% die because you are a feeble little human. And the best part? Good. There's no pay and you start now. I mean, it sounds like a great deal to me, Terry. I don't, I don't really know how you turn something like that down. Ready? Yes. Now here's where the movie starts to really juice up. You remember that dead, burnt to a crisp crocodile from a few minutes ago? Yeah, that's not dead. Instead, Nigel decided to be a good idea to tranquilize it and I guess sell it to the highest bidder, which seems like foolproof logic to me. Who doesn't want a crocodile the size of a skyscraper who could ate their house in one bite? Oh, also, apparently, this crocodile is a she, and she has laid a lot of crocodile eggs. Dude, you ever seen what, an egg that big? Yeah. <laughs> Hell no. But guess who's in the mood for a nice crocosaurus omelet? That's right, the Mega Shark! Leave her off the rope! I said, leave the rope! She cut the rope to that tomb after her! No, no, no! Go after each other. Oh, fuck yeah. Time for the first showdown. Let's get it on. Oh, what? I thought he said they were gonna fight. Uh, all this boring story is getting in the way of what I came here for. A good old fashioned monster movie slugfest. No one cares about Terry's meeting with the Shark Murdering Association. Welcome to my domain. Every seaman, from recruit to special agent to me, we are all dedicated to hunting, finding, and killing the Karcharoklis Megalodon. 
No one cares about Nigel getting dragged into the war by Hutchinson. You need to come with me. Where are we going? Back to your place for a little r and &L? <laughs> No one cares about Mama Croc moving her eggs to the Fisherman's Wharf for a bit of seclusion. Well, except for this guy. No one cares about Nigel threatening the life of these eight-year-old boys who found him unconscious on the beach. What's your name, boy? Come on, Nigel. Do something interesting. My God. So, once our three main humans finally meet up, we get a bit of backstory. Apparently, Terry and Nigel are acquaintances. Behind his scientific facade is a man with more veracity than a lion. In other words, his fiance is the best piece of ass that's ever walked in an African jungle. Isn't that right, Lieutenant? Ah, the typical greeting of the wild man bad boy. Hey Terry, how the hell are you? You vicious son bitch! Yeah, yeah, samesies. And I'd also like to remind you that I would love to take a ride on the necrophiliac train first stop your wife! Woo woo! Now that is a wild man bad boy for you right there. And after the introduction, the trio head to the location of Mother Croc's eggs. In the meantime, did you experience Africa? Ha! There's more brother in me than you! Really? Really! Well, if you're saying I didn't experience robbing and killing villagers and denying their dignity and their pride, then no, I didn't experience Africa. Ho ho ho! The wild man bad boy strikes again with the heinous war crimes! You humans out there who haven't gone Team Megalodon yet, you sure you want to keep cheering for the wild man? Okay. I thought the crocodile was supposed to play the villain, but okay. Shut it, guys. You'd have thought once it got laid. <laughs> and there, guys, guys, guys! The shark! Oh, hell yeah! Time for the showdown. Place your bets, everyone. Place your bets. It's time for some carnage. Oh no you won't, what you need to do is focus on a 1500 foot pissed off crocodile that's heading up the coast. Yeah, and a hungry megalodon chasing him. Oh come the fuck on! I thought this movie was called Mega Shark vs. Crocosaurus, not Bitch Croc Gets Scared Away by a Little Explosion. <sighs> fuck off. You know what, if these bitches aren't gonna throw down, I guess I'm gonna have to bring you guys the action that you're all craving. Oh, yes! Hello! My name is Mega Shark here, Crocosaurus, and I'm gonna take your scaly ass to Pound Town! Look, buddy, I've been laying eggs all day. I'm not really in the mood for this. You've been laying. Then where's the other giant crocodile that's been, you know, taking you to the other kind of Pound Town this whole time? Well, I mean, there's tons of eligible giant crocodile bachelors out there. They just. Don't happen to be in this movie. Just shut up, alright? Let's do this, you prick. Now that's a fight scene. Take notes, movie. I expect to see something of equal or greater awesomeness here soon. Now I know you probably didn't have the funds to hire the illustrious Quibble Shark for your movie, but I'm still expecting pretty good things. There she is. Yeah, she's headed to Miami. So the chase is on as both Megalodon and Crocosaurus head to Miami for some R&R. But the military is hot on their heels with guns a-blazing. Torpedoes away. OK, 
Okay. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. So the shark bites into the torpedo. It doesn't blow up. Then he jumps into the air with the torpedo, which I'm not gonna lie, I thought the momentum of the torpedo was gonna take him into space as the setup for Mega Shark vs. Alien, as I'm sure all of you did as well. The popular fan theory from the Mega Shark vs. Crocosaurus fan club, which I happen to be the founder of, is that that was the initial plan, but 20th Century Fox pulled the idea thinking that it would be unrealistic for a clash between the two, with Mega Shark obviously wiping the floor with the Xenomorph. But anyways, back on track. Then the torpedo, which doesn't appear to be broken in the least, falls after Mega Shark, nearly colliding with him, probably hitting him in the water. Yet it still doesn't explode. Focus, people. We haven't seen anything yet. Now hold on a minute there. Haven't seen anything yet? So you're telling me that Mega Shark has more impressive moves than mouth defusal of a torpedo. I mean, I'm not questioning that, but it's definitely something. Did you eagle-eyed viewers out there catch that? Take a closer look at that building. Notice anything? That's right, it's a poster for Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus! Take notes, Marvel, this is how you do movie Easter eggs. An arc flash with about a thousand amperes or more can create enough electrical force that it'll drive back the crocodile, or at least stun it. Well, mate, it's gonna have to be a pretty big flash. Ah, the Turkey Point nuclear facility. An arc flash, huh? That sounds pretty technical and fancy. I bet there's gonna be a lot of red tape to get the okay for that, though. Turkey Point. This is the USS Lexington. I need to execute an arc flash immediately. Sir, I don't think we can do that. This is a direct order from the Chief of Naval Operations. Do it! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Really? That's all it takes? No way. Yellow, yeah, Turkey Point Nuclear Reactor Center. This is Chaz. How can I help you today? Oh, hello there. This is Corporal Random with the uh, First National Submarine de la Aquatica. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna need you to nuke Miami for me real quick. There's two big monster creatures fighting down there. It's pretty heavy stuff. Oh, uh, I'm not sure that we can do that, Corporal. There's actually quite a bit of heavy paperwork involved before we could just take an order to- This is a direct order from Captain Nemo himself, Chaz. Do you really want to be the reason hundreds of young love interests die today? Oh, wait a minute. Random? I see what this is. Look, random. You can't call here and expect me to drop a nuke on a major city every time you watch a movie with giant monsters, okay? I got in trouble the last time. Sorry, buddy. Damn! What an unrealistic movie. No! Not Shamu! One. That was easy. So, once the arc flash has kicked off, surprise, surprise, nothing happens. Mega Shark leaves with Mama Croc right after. I'm starting to notice a trend here, movie. But regardless, through a series of circumstances relating to the crocodile eggs as a lure, both Mega Shark and Crocosaurus wind up at the Panama Canal, where finally, the epic battle commences. That was awesome. Oh my god. Did you see the way Mega Shark went for the stomach? Or how about that epic tail to mouth gridlock? That is what I'm talking about, movie. Hell yeah. Did that just happen? Did they just. Did they just kill Mega Shark? Buckle up, boys. We're going home. What the fuck? Oh, come on! 
Let me just, let's just, let me just rewind that real quick. So Mega Shark saves a brother shark from being tortured. Tracks down and eats giant crocodile eggs before they become a problem. And takes on Crocosaurus in an attempt to rid the world of its evil presence. And I'm supposed to cheer for Nigel and Terry finding a way to torch his ass. Need I remind you that Terry is torturing defenseless sharks in the safety of a massive boat? This could change everything. Whoa. And Nigel. Don't even get me fucking started on Nigel. Nigel came into this movie a war criminal. What if you're saying I didn't experience robbing and killing villagers and denying their dignity and their pride didn't know I didn't experience Africa. Tranquilized and attempted to sell a 50-foot man-eating killer crocosaurus. You sure that thing isn't gonna wake up? Nope. Came in and basically said he wanted to bang Terry's dead wife. In other words, his fiance is the best piece of ass that's ever walked in an African jungle. And I know what you're saying. Oh, Nigel didn't know Terry's wife was dead. Well, say that to me after this. This is not your fiance, okay? She's listen, listen to me. She's the best thing that's ever happened to me. me. No, if I'll leave her, I'll leave her forever. This is not your fiance, listen to me. I'm sorry about your fiance. I can't bring her back. At no point on screen did they tell Nigel what happened. So, he knew. You know what? Fuck this. I'm calling an audible. Wait, wait, wait! Why are we fighting, Crocodile? Because, like, that's the way God intended it? Two beasts in an epic battle for ecological supremacy? Also, you've, like, been eating my eggs. Oh, yes. I remember now. But, say, how about we take out the humans before we finish up our battle? That's not a bad idea, actually. Alright. Truce. For now. All right, shark, that's like the end of him. Shark? 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 Sorry, crocodile, but I've got a hunger for baby eggs. There we go, much better. Now that is an ending that I think we can all get behind. Anyways, that's the video guys. Like it, don't like it, let me know. This video took quite a bit of time to make. It's pretty long, obviously, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it at least somewhat. The movie itself is not good. I wouldn't recommend it personally. I did leave some things out of context for the video, obviously, but uh, there was an ending portion that I skipped where Mega Shark and Crocosaurus go to Hawaii for the final fight, and they use the same fight animations, basically, but the video was already pretty long, so I just clipped it a bit down for brevity. I may do another video like this at some point with a different shark-related movie, obviously, so if that sounds like something you guys would be interested in, then let me know. It would be quite a ways down the line, though, since these videos do take quite a bit of time and scripting and such stuff like that. Also, I don't really want movie reviews or whatever you would call this to be my main focus. Just the occasional side thing. But regardless, I'd like to thank all of you again for 1K. I know it's a bit past, but still. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the content and shark pride for life, bruh.